Hello everyone, welcome to Ijao Tech. Okay, it's, it's good to see you, but let's talk about chapter five. Okay, the effects of using information technology. Okay, in this chapter, we're looking at the positive and negative effect on various aspects of everyday life. And then we look at um, the positive and negative effects also in monitoring and controlling transport. And then again, we'll talk about RSI, back and neck problem, eye problem, headaches, and causes of health issues, and of course, ways of preventing them, okay? So let's go ahead. So the first thing is the microprocessor control devices. And what are they? They are simply those devices that are controlled with your microprocessors, okay? And Using them in the home can have a positive and negative effect in one, lifestyle, two, leisure time, three, physical fitness, four, data security, and five, social interaction. We'll talk about lifestyle, we'll talk about our day to day living, we'll talk about leisure time, we'll talk about the spare time we have to ourselves, we'll talk about physical fitness, we'll talk about those exercises we carry out. We we'll talk about data, um, data security, we're talking about those information that are personal to us and social interaction, we'll talk about our um, relationship on the internet. Okay, now many household devices are now fitted with the microprocessors to control a large number of their functions. Okay, these devices fall into the two main groups that we're looking at. We have one, labor saving devices, which is a group one. And what are labor saving devices? We're talking about those devices that will help you, that will save a lot of time. Because if we're doing it on our own, it might not be so easy. Take for instance, washing our clothes. Literally, you have to wash like 60 clothes, okay? Now, that is dead killing. I know, I know, right? It's dead killing. But with the automatic washing machine, it gives us time to wash our clothes, why doing other things, okay? We don't have to spend the hours, you know, dedicated in, right? Washing, you're racing the cloth and you're doing this. Just just put it in the washing machine, time it, and um, it does everything for you, literally everything for you, and you're good to go. The microwave oven, the cookers, automatic dish washers, the robotic vacuum cleaners, you know, imagine if you stay in the mansion and you have to clean all your house, like every room by room. Or you're in a hotel, you work, you know, or you have some employees, but it's fine, right? You you pay them to do it. But then again, I think it'll be more cost effective or labor saving to you know get this robot to, uh, this robot to actually you know go around and just suck up all those dirt and and, and that makes it so easy. Bread making machine. The smart fridge or the freezers, they can order food for you and just keep a track of your healthy diet. What about other devices? We have level saving devices, other devices like our alarm clock that wakes up by five. It wakes, literally wakes us up when we time it to do it. Television sets that helps us to be able to, you know, pull up to our favorite channels. Central heating and air conditioner system that makes a place to cool and heat whenever we want it. Mobile phones and tablets, etc., etc. Now we we'll talk about the leisure time and the lifestyles and the physical fitness that we have. We're talking about for the advantages. People no longer have to do manual tasks at home, and this is what has helped us. This is what the microprocessor have actually done for us because because now now we don't have um, to do all those manual tasks. Um, as we used to. Now we have a device that can help us in as much as possible to do it even while we are away. Okay? And they give us more time for our leisure activities. Okay? Shopping, socializing, and why all these things have been done. Even have time for a meeting. And there is no longer the need to stay at home while the food is cooking or the clothes have been washed. Because the moment you put it on a washing machine, you set on a timer, you can actually monitor it from your end to ensure that the clothes are washed. What more? It is possible to control your oven and automatic washing machines. Okay? Using your smartphones. Okay? To get this done. Automatic burglar alarm gives you that sense of protection. 
you know, to protect you where um, anybody comes in or to keep you secure or more and level of intruder warnings that people are coming into your place. Smart fridges can lead to a more healthy lifestyle. They can order food, like I've said, from the supermarket using the internet connection, of course. But let's look at the disadvantage. Is there? Yes, there is. Well, it can lead to a healthy lifestyle because lack of exercises, you can get stuck, stuck, stuck of your smart food, with, you know, and that, you know, you can literally order food from you, so the exercises will not be there. Because, see, when you go out to get your food, that's a form of exercise, right? But now we just sit on our home, on our homes and these things are done. And it tends to make people rather lazy because there is dependency on these devices. And there's always that potential of you losing the household skill. In fact, children of this generation, and if you're watching this, I, I mean no offense to you, trust me. I, I mean no offense to you. But our dependency, your dependency on this thing is actually making you to lose the basic skills that you had. Back in my days, I know. My mom would tell me to sweep the house, clean the place. It, it gave us that skill, that basic skill that put us in any home. We know what to do. You know, to and it also helped us to to, to be independent. You know, when we raise up our when we raise up our own families as much as possible. As with any device which contains a microprocessor and can communicate with using the internet, there is always that risk of cyber security, that threat. People can hack into it, and that can cause a lot of damage. Okay, now it shows the general way in which. All microprocessor control devices can affect our lives. This includes which are not necessarily worth saving, but to improve our functionality. What are they? I'll just talk about this briefly and then we can go to other points. Microprocess control devices save energy because they are far more e efficient and can, for example, switch themselves off after inactivity for a certain period of time. It can be easier programming these devices to perform tasks rather than just turning knots and pressing buttons. For example, the QR codes on the side of the food packaging can simply be scanned and order and the oven automatically sets the cooking program. Devices lead to a more wasteful society. How? It is usually not cost effective to repair circuit boards once they fail. The devices is then usually thrown away. That's actually a disadvantage. Why? Right? Because when these keyboards are damaged, you just have to just throw it away and get a new one. Okay? It costs more to actually repair though, but at the end it's still a waste. They can be more complex to operate for people who are who have that techno pro or they're not very confident within the electronic. Um, devices. Leaving some devices on standby is very uh, wasteful of electricity. Okay. Now let's talk about for social interactions. What are we talking about? Uh, I think we've talked about data security issues. Okay. Um, any any household devices which can be remotely controlled allow a hacker to just can personal details about you, so that's fine. And um, so it is therefore important to manage passwords. How can you manage passwords? Have a different password on each device. Also install software updates, which often contains new um, security features. Social inter interaction talks about um, uh, communication is in the chat platforms, okay? And um, it's both positive and negative okay impact of these control devices on social interaction to consider because it's why some people leave why some devices leave people with more time to do other things um, outside their homes other devices encourage people to stay at home devices such as what smartphones smart televisions tablets which allow people to communicate from home using what we call the VOIP back in the days we, we go out to interact with people to meet up friends, but now you just, 
you can just stay indoor and you're connected to the world right it's said and done right then we have what are the what are those positive impact of the microcontrolled devices easier to make friends using um, the chat rooms easier to find people who share that similar interests or hobbies it's less expensive to keep in touch using the vi voip technology You're talking about the voice over internet technology but the negative aspect is people don't need to meet face to face and that creates what we call a social isolation you can just see i've had friends of I've, I've had students who have i've never met in my life okay the students in south korea um Botswana, you know mozambique and uh, um um ghana you know the students in in dubai in pakistan in, in the uk in the us I've, I've not even seen but we interact okay and why this gives an opportunity to, to interact with um with people who have a similar interest it creates that social isolation a lack of social interaction may make people more, more anxious of meeting people in real life people people have that phobia to seeing people in real life because they're used to making friends online. People behave differently when interacting online. They, they feel like, oh, since I'm just with my, my microcontrol devices, I can just, you know, say whatever I want to say. Okay? Do whatever I want to do. And this poses a real threat to young people because they engage in cyberbullying, they're more aggressive, they're rude. And, and this was not, this is not the intention of it. But it is, it is what it is now. Monitoring and controlling transport. How do we monitor using this microcontrol device? How do we monitor? How do we control transport? Okay. The first one is monitor of traffic, so motorway. Conjunction zone monitoring, automatic number plate recognitions, automatic control of traffic lights, air traffic control system, the railway signaling system. Let's look at this real quick. Now, many motor, motorways are now called smart motorway. What do we mean? Now, this is because monitoring and control of the traffic or the information displayed on the motorway sign is controlled by what we call a central computing system. Computer system. Okay? Now, this helps us. Imagine the chaos that would cause if any of the systems were had. Somebody could just have control over a chosen section of the road network. Right, this can cause a huge impact. Okay, somebody can just tell you to stop, and that's going to cause a whole chaos. Okay, all of a sudden, so that is why all these things are timed. For railway, an airline network control system. Talking about trains and airplanes, entering and leaving stations, and airport is a complex task, but computerized monitoring system makes this possible. Let's look at the advantages it has. The advantages could be the smart motorway, right? Constantly adapt to what? To traffic conditions. Reducing traffic jams and minimizing everyone's journey time. The disadvantage on the other hand could be hackers could gain access to the computer system and cause a disruption. All of a sudden you stop it. Okay? Transport systems are now more efficient because more cars, more trains, more aeroplanes can now use the transport network allowing for a more regular service. Now, if the computer system fails, then the whole travel system could be brought to a standstill. Traffic offenses, for example, driving in the wrong lane can automatically be penalized using what we call an automatic automated number plate recognition. Talking about the ANPR. Fully designed system could compromise safety. Okay? Stolen cars and criminals can now be spotted using the ANPR because now we now have what we call a monitoring, you know, railway and train stations. Okay, we have it right here. Okay? Railway and your airline networks. People can now use it. If you watch all these movies, you see how they're, they're just tapping the button because now it's controlled and they're able to just track where they are. AMP, the ANPR system means that innocent people can easily be tracked. Who has access to, the, to that data? People can track you, track where you are. 
And but the good thing is it minimizes human error, which reduces the rate of what? Accident. Autonomous vehicle in transport. We will talk about autonomous vehicle in transport. We're talking about um, how computers talk about the buses, the vans. Now, and they make use of what we call a sensor. Okay? A sensor, a camera, an actuator, a microprocessor. Together with very complex algorithm to carry out what we call action safety. What are the sensors? Radar and ultrasonic. Okay? To check around your environment. Cameras allow the control system in cars to perform critical function by sensing dynamic conditions on the road. They act as the eye and ears of the car. Okay? And the creatures are the ones that are just performing those instructions that are given from the sensor. Okay? Because they can be linear, they can be rotary, as the case may be. Microprocessor processes the device received from cameras and sensor and send the signal to the actuator to perform physical actions. What are those physical actions? Change gear, applying brakes, turn the steering wheel, etc. The camera catch visual data from the environment. Why? Your sensor allows the vehicle to build up a 3D image of its surrounding. Especially when visibility is poor. You, you, especially at night. Okay? Now, let me pin this scenario before I move on. Suppose an automated car is approaching a set of traffic lights, which I'll show you there. The first thing the control system in the car needs to recognize is the road sign. And check the database to what action to perform. Because the traffic light shows red, the microprocessor sends signal to the actuator to apply brakes and put the car into what? Park. Constant monitoring must take place until the light changes to green. When this happens, the microprocessor will gain instruction. We again instruct the actuator to put the car into what? First gear. Release the brakes and operate the throttle. This is a very complex set of operations. And because the microprocessor must constantly check all sensors or cameras to ensure moving off is safe. Um, for example, has the car in front of it broken down? Or has the pedestrian started to cross the road and so on? All this. Security and safety when using autonomous vehicles. Hackers may not even have to break into the vehicle control system. They may be able to cause many problems by blocking sensor information or sending false information hacked to the vehicle. And there are very reasons this will benefit a hacker. But it is outside the scope of the textbook. All right? That is, for example, the one who caused accident or sin. Okay? Now, for example, this is what I'm talking about, the AI. Now, you see, for example, this has been programmed in such a way that there is that proximity and each of them are sending signals to one another to maintain that lane that they need to maintain. And it's carrying around for pedestrians as much as possible to ensure that all those things are noted. What are the advantages? Safety, because human error is removed. It's very expensive to set up. It is better for the environment because vehicle will operate more efficiently. The ever present fear of hacking is always going to be there. It reduces traffic congestion because humans cause stop and go traffic, known as what? Phantom traffic jam. Automatic vehicle will have a better at smoothing out traffic flow, reducing congestion in cities. Security and safety issues is always going to be there. Okay, software glitches could be catastrophic. And then again, increased lane capacity. Research shows that autonomous vehicles will increase lane capacity by 100%, increase average speed by 20% due to a better braking and oscillation response. What more? Reduce travel time. 
stress free parking for motorways. But then again, there's a reduction in need for taxis, which could lead to unemployment. And we, we can see that even though it's reduced travel time, drivers and passenger reductions of a new technology is always going to be there. Now, this is for the train, autonomous train. Okay, now it's made to what we call the light detection and region. It also views a 3D image surrounding other sensors like the proximity sensors on train doors, cameras, your infrared cameras is always going to be there, you know. And all this is to help control the train and maintain safety of the passengers and the environment. Okay. So what is the advantage? Improve punctuality of the train. If the train is going to stop by 7, it will stop by 7. Then again, we have the ever fear of hacking is always going to be there in the vehicle system. Then we have um, reduced running costs because fewer staffs are needed. Safety does not work well with very busy service at the moment. The system does not work well, especially when there is a busy service. Improve safety because human error is removed. There is cost of operation as well. You need to know that. Minimize energy consumption. Ensuring personal behavior is acceptable, particularly during busy times. Jamming doors open on trains, etc. It's easier to change the train scheduling. More trains during busier times. No driver means there will be need for city to monitor the way which train stations. Now, for aeroplanes. Okay. Now, some of the main features of the aeroplane in the control system on a pilotless aeroplane include sensor to detect turbulence, an increase in self-testing of all circuits and system, sensor that would automatically detect depressurization in the cabin, use of GPS for navigation and speed calculation, use of actuators to control, flag of the wings, the derailleur, as much as possible. There's improvement in passenger comfort, security aspect of hacking is there, terrorist attacking, reduced running cost, emergency situation during flight may be difficult to deal with, improved safety, most crashes of aeroplane have not been attributed to what to pilot induced errors. Hacking could be made possible. So if there's now talking about the first one, now if there are improvement in passenger comfort, we see that this can pose a security issue because of since there's no pilot, right? Terrorists could attack. Okay, and a lot of them. Okay, and finally, potential health problem related to the prolonged use of IT. We're using this equipment for so long, there are health issues, and we're going to look at it right here for the back, the back here, and the neck strain, which is a health risk. What are the causes? We are sitting in front of the computer screen for a long period of time. Okay, you're going to have that back. And next train. So what are the eliminations or reduction? Use adjustable chairs, right? Economic chairs. Use a footrest. Okay, use tittable screens. Okay. And then again, the next one is the RSI, repetitive strain injury, which is damage to your fingers and your wrist, caused by what? Continual use of the keyboard or clicking of the mouse. And what are the elimination process or reduction? Ensure correct posture is maintained. Okay, ensure it. Correct posture is maintained. Okay? Then again, use, make use of what we call a risk rest. Take frequent breaks. Make use of economic keyboards 
Use voice activated softwares if possible. The eye strain. Now for the eye strain, it is caused by staring at a computer screen for too long. You know, most of you guys either you're watching film, Netflix, okay? Don't know at all cozy. Do you have it in your laptops? Mm hmm You do? Okay. Playing the Call of Duty. I know you play it in your laptops too. Mm-hmm. Okay. And lots of it. So because of this, and then you have your assignments. Okay, and then you have socializing as much as your social networking sites as much as possible. And so staring at the computer screen for too long will cause an eye strain. So what are the eliminations or reduction process of this health risk? Make use of an anti-glare screen. If the room lighting is incorrect or the window blinds to cut off direct sunlight, or use the window blind to cut off direct sunlight. Users should have eyes tested on a regular basis. And take frequent breaks. Don't just sit all day. If necessary, change the screen to LCD that if you're using other screens. Headaches. Mm -hmm. Now, headaches are caused with flickering. If your, skin is, if your screen is flickering, right? Or incorrect lighting, screen reflection, it can cause headaches. So make use of anti-glare anti screens, right? Take frequent breaks. Users should have their eyes tested on the regular basis. Ozone irritation is caused by laser printers in an office. It, this, this is a different thing, right? It's a health risk. But for the ozone irritation, it is caused by laser printers in an office. Symptoms are dry skin, dry skin, and respiratory problem. So, what do we do? What do you do? Proper ventilation should exist to allow the ozone gas level to an acceptable value. Laser printer should be housed in the designated printer room. You should have a separate printer room. People, people should not just go there to work. It should just be a special room. And change to using inkjet printers where possible. Now you've known all this. Hmm. I've been teaching, I've been teaching, I've been teaching. I think it's time for me to do what? Take. Break. So, thank you so much. And see you in my next class. Bye-bye.